So let's say that we want to create a tune that has note values that are smaller than quarter notes. Then what we'd have to do is modify the grid. So let me take a step back. I have my little melody here. I double click on that region. Remember, we're dealing with a loop. So we're really only editing this one bit, okay? So I'm gonna, just to simplify things, I'm gonna go back and, and turn this into just a MIDI item over here, uh, one measure long. Okay, so I double click, and I'm gonna delete these. I select the, the note, MIDI note, and I just get rid of it. Now you may be wondering what these bars are over here, and I'll, you'll, you'll find out soon. Uh, these are the velocities, meaning the volume, that's the volume level. So if I, once again, if I double click over here, it'll automatically, uh, actually go back. If I have my grid on and I double click over here, it'll automatically create a note aligned with the grid that is as long as the grid value over here. So if I want it to be shorter, let's say I want the notes to by default be eighth notes, okay? Then I would have to go here and click on one eighth. Now, make sure that this is on straight, or else, if it's on triplet, it'll, it'll split it into three. It'll assume you haven't tried to do some kind of a swing, which you may be doing, but uh, sometimes this somehow gets messed up and it goes to, uh, you know, if you click and you don't realize you put it on triplet, then you wonder why it's doing triplets instead of eighth notes or whatever. So I'm gonna do it, put it on eighth, one eighth, and then if I double click, my default low length is an eighth note. So notice that because the grid is on, I can't actually put the, eight, the notes anywhere else except either on at the beginning of beat one or the, or the beginning of any of these beats on the downbeat or, the, or on, the end, on the end of each any of these. I can't just put it in between. To do that, I would have to uh, turn off the magnet and then move it around, right? And so the idea is that, is that this will make it easier for you to... Um, for you to create rhythms that are very straightforward, you know, which is uh, which is fine. Let's say you're writing a computer piece or uh, something that has a, uh, I don't know, like a, a song that you want it to be very even, you know, that might be exactly what you need. So let's see how that sounds. I'm just, right, exactly, perfect. All right, um, so let's say that I, I wanna switch and I want a little 16th note passage, you know, maybe a little 16th note thing right here or at the very end, let's say, then I would have to change my grid to 16th notes. So 116, and then when I do, when I zoom in, I should be able to, why is it still eighth notes? Should, this should not be doing that. Oh yeah, that's right, it is 16th notes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I got confused, but it is 16th notes. That's right. Okay, so so right, so I expanded, I zoomed in, and now you, each of these uh, portions of the grid corresponds to a 16th note in value. So I can do something like this, you know, I don't know, on the I ands. And then I can go here and I can do a little syncopation and see how that sounds now. Cool, right? So you can get some really, uh, you know, very rhythmic things happening very, very easily using grids. And let's say we do want a triplet too, right? Well, why not? We could do that. We could do a uh, triplet. So we'll do eighth note triplet. And see now, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see that you have your, here's beat one, Here's beat two, there's still a measure one, beat three, and beat four. And as you can see, the grid is now adjusted so that it shows triplets. So I could do something like triplet. And by the way, you can, you can select several notes. I, I could just I could click on a note and then select a note a little later and just shift click. And then I can copy and then I can just paste that. And then I can drag the whole entire thing down. And then I can just do that. So now this should be, I should have this kind of eighth note sounding thing along with a triplet kind of a, uh, you know, 
continuous uh, obbligato or whatever. <laughs> so it's really fun. As you can see. Okay, excellent. Um, the last thing I want to show you that has a lot to do with the grid as well is quantization. Very powerful, very, very powerful. So uh, now if you if you look at this second bit of sound with the second track here, you see that things look very square and even, right? That's because we created it with a grid. So if I were to do this over and over, I, I get this like really nice mechanical uh, machine like thing, which is how a lot of a lot of music is composed. Maybe not with the triplets against that, but uh, I'm going to get rid of that. But the thing that I recorded originally with my piano is uh, messy looking, right? So the question is, <clears throat> how can I use uh, the grid to make this uh, kind of, uh, can, I, can I use the grid to make this sound a little bit more, more even, right? Because part of the problem with this, it's not really a problem, but part of the reason it sounds kind of weird is that it's, it's uh, you know, that the timing is all off, you know, because of, well, first of all, even if you, you, you can't play piano, um, it's very difficult to play with the perfect timing. It's very difficult. It's basically impossible. So if you record something, and if you, if you try to play a simple melody, you'll find that it's very difficult to get that, to get those, those notes to really align with the grid. So, so what you can do is you can actually get, you can quantize things, which means you can, you can have Reaper guess what you were trying to do and it'll, it'll adjust things to, it'll basically put it, uh, you know, let's say you put, you played something and it was almost at, on, at the end of two. If you quantize it to the nearest eighth note, it'll, it'll bump things to the nearest eighth note so that, you know, it, it, it's actually, it's actually, uh, you know, more like what you were trying to do. I mean, it'll, it'll basically sound more like the notated music, if you will. So that's kind of the big thing with MIDI is that it's very good for uh, making sounds that sound uh, like you made them with the computer, if you know what I mean. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't shut off all those features and just use MIDI to do a very open and creative things. Uh, and, and rhythmically free. There's no, no reason, absolutely, you can't do that. But typically, the, you know, you quantize things and, you know, you, you basically dehumanize things just because that's kind of what, what MIDI does well. So I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this bit that I created. I'm going to play it for you now with the metronome. And uh, here, I think it's, no, it's still piano. Oh, no, it's flute. Right. So right now you can hear that the clicking of the metronome is, is got almost nothing to do with what's happening, right? And I don't even know if I had a click going at the same time with that. So let's just say that I, I want this to somehow align with the metronome in some way that right now I'm just, you know, I was trying to do something and I'm, uh, I'm so bad that I, you know, I kind of wish that I was, that I could align it. So if I double click on this, you'll see that all those notes are kind of, you know, different lengths and then they're definitely not aligned with the grid. You know, so what you could do is you can, let's say we do the grid at eighth note level, okay? Then I go control or command, I'm sorry, command A if you're on a Mac, and then you press the letter Q or you go to this Q right here. And what that will do is it'll quantize things. It'll, once again, based on the grid, it'll change the note position and this is the option you want actually the note position and length so basically it'll adjust the note position to the nearest eighth note but it'll also adjust the note length so that if you if you have it anywhere uh close to an eighth it'll, well actually in this case it'll make everything an eighth note long now if you don't want it to be quite so strict you might want to do uh change the size of the grid you might do a 16th notes right so uh, let's actually do do that. Let's go back. Okay, so we'll go position and note length. We'll go to one sixteenth, and then we'll select all, and we will say, wait a minute, select all, quantize. There we go. Okay, so so now it's all the notes as you can see are are sixteenth note long, right? Because you, you, this is a, a global quantization, right? So you, which, what I could have done actually is I could have just quantized the position and not the note length, 
so you can do not long no and only I'm sorry no da, 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 da. position and note end position let's just do the position so we'll only quantize where the notes begin we'll leave the actual length that I played as is they'll just be moved to the nearest 16th note in that case maybe we'll change it to the nearest eighth note or something let's see how that goes select all There we go. Okay, let's see how that sounds now. Right, and of course we have some notes that are not playing, and you know that way that is because I changed the instrument to a flute. So I'm going to change to a piano, and I think you see what I was trying to what I was trying to show you that the uh, this kind of random sounding thing that I made has you know is going uh, perfectly well along with the beat now, and that's because it's been quantized. So it's been dehumanized, right? It basically corrected. It, it, it looked at all the all the timings that I had, and it and it assumed that I made a mistake that I was planning to do something in that, that particular eighth note, which sometimes is the case. In this case, I was just going to randomly play some notes, but then when I play it back, and now it, because everything is moved, and if when you listen to the click track, you'll hear that it goes along quite well. well not so well, actually. <laughs> Maybe not that well, right? Yeah, so I mean, it's not perfect. You know what? The, the quantization just disappeared, though. That's what happened. Let's do the cue again. There we go. I guess I was previewing it, and I didn't actually commit it. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. So that's the idea. And all those notes maybe don't... Wait a minute. Let me get rid of those long notes. All right, let's do it again. But this time, we will bake the tempo much faster because we're not a sixth cup of coffee. So I'm going to put a 230. And so that's pretty interesting, right? Because you can take a, a kind of a, a badly played thing and you can quantize it in different ways and, and you could actually wind up with something that's pretty interesting. So I'm going to show you this one other way, uh, just real quick. Uh, I'll do it from the very beginning. I'm going to actually record a uh, basic, like, you know, I'll do like, I don't know. And then I'll show you just how difficult it is to actually get it to align with a metronome. It's really not that easy. So I'm going to change the tempo to like 80 because on a level one piano. Um, and then here we go. And so when you listen to it, um, well, first of all, you don't have to even listen to it to see that the notes were not quite aligned with the metronome, right? And uh, once again, it's, part, it's partly because of, of the way I played it, but it's just simply very difficult for us humans to play rhythmically perfectly and certainly not like a computer. So I can, I can just go ahead and go in here if I wanted to, and I can fix things just like I did earlier. I think I will have to do a 16th note level though because, yeah. And then you basically just quantize. Q, I'll do position and length. And there we go. Let's see what happens. Close it. See, now it looks pretty perfect. And I guess I started on beat two, huh? That's right, I did. So that's also something you can fix, right? I can now go all the way and move everything back. You know, that doesn't look right, though. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, that's funny. I guess this one note was was so off that it kind of assumed that I was doing something else. So to fix just that note, I just have to make sure I deselect the whole thing, and I'm selecting one note. Okay, that should work. Let's try again. <coughs> Oh, 
Right, so I think you, you see what, what the point of it is. Quantizing is uh, very helpful. If you're trying to, once again, dry, do something that sounds mechanical and you just want to input some notes and toy around with them and then see what happens, okay? So that's it for this one.